This video is sponsored by Cricut. Welcome to this week's video. I've had to put pause on the living room because I'm waiting on supplies. But while I'm waiting on supplies, I thought it's time to play with my Cricut. And I'm gonna do something that I hope this works out. I wanna play with base wood and I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker to hopefully make a doll's house, a little doll's house. Will I give the doll house to my niece? Probably not, I will keep this one in my house. How many doll's houses has she got at this stage? But I thought it would be a fun way to flex some of my woodwork skills, but basically the Cricut is gonna do most of the work for me. I'm gonna do it with thin wood. And I really hope this works out. I have seen people make dollhouse furniture with their Cricut makers online, but I haven't seen anyone try to make an actual dollhouse. There is a couple of housey projects in the Design Space app. Remember in autumn, and I did the room makeover challenge with Cricut. We did some Christmas houses, like paper ones. Um, but I haven't, my goal is to have an actual house house, so. Let's get into it and see if I can do it. Okay, let's go into design space and I'm gonna share how I made a template for the doll's house. So this is my, hang on, this is my front panel and I made this by going into, let me find it. So I went into shapes and I used this one here that is a straight line and scrolling down I also used some of these shapes here. So you'll see I have an open-ended circle and then this one here. And what I did was I just adjusted them in size so that I could make this frame. Now I have attached them. So I'm gonna just detach them so I can show you. So for this front piece, so this is my first one, which is the front door. So I just did the square for this one and I can move this around and the reason why I have windows on the right hand side I'll show you now so this is the door that I want to do but I'm gonna cut this out separately and stick it on but I need holes to be cut in the piece of wood so that I can then layer on my windows and my doors so here is the door that I want to stick on. So I will cut this on a separate piece of wood so that I'll have depth to the doll's house. So same with the windows. So these, you'll see here operation and it says basic cut. You can get that to do anything. If you wanted to draw this on paper, you would just click pen, etc., and change it. So here is the window that I wanna stick on. And again, this will be cut out separate and I will stick it on top of this hole and um, which will be my window <laughs> good old construction and I found that window by going into images and then I typed in window and I had a good old scroll actually door you can see I was typing for the door there so here is loads of window options so you just have to think of things that are going to be easy to cut on the wood the likes of those squares would probably be easy and you can also use the bookmark symbol to save your favorites so when i click on the left hand side where the bookmarked ones here is some options of windows that i liked um, i decided to go for a simple um, oval design because i was just thinking of what would be easiest to cut on the wood and i haven't tested out any of these and i'm hoping they will cut for me my only concern is maybe they're going to be too intricate if they are I could always cut them on vinyl and stick the vinyl over the window and um, but I really want to try and cut these on wood so that's where I found the images for the windows and the doors so feel free to customize this how you please so back on the canvas I'm just gonna move my window oh wrong window sorry I'm just gonna move them back over so I hope that explains the method behind the these squares and these ones it's just because I want to have a whole cut and then I will layer on so this is my back door and also both these measure the same so this is 26.05 times 18.09 and both are the same this is the back so I'm thinking I'll have a floor across here I wanted loads of windows something I've noticed about dolls houses is like they may have windows in the front 
but they're lacking windows in the back. So I've gone for double windows. I'm thinking bathroom, bedroom, living room, kitchen. <laughs> you like me thinking? And then obviously front door, hallway. So I have, actually I'm just going to flatten this again. So I'm going to select all of this and I'm just going to click attach so that means that if I move this around everything with the squares inside will move around together okay now you'll notice these are my two side pieces but I have no windows in them and I think maybe a simple one window and one window because I need to make sure I have enough wood <laughs> for this project so over here I have I have eight windows for the back and then I have my um six windows sorry my five windows on my door for here so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy two more of my windows from here so I'm going to click on this I'm going to double click and I'm going to click duplicate, my favorite thing to do. So for this side, what if we do a big window? So as you can see, I can resize these. So I'm thinking, let's go big. Well, not too big. You can tell I'm having way too much fun with this. I'm going to hit duplicate and then I'm going to do the same over here I'm just centering it see the way it's is this center hang on I think that is don't worry if it's not too center I'm just kind of eyeballing it I feel like this needs to go over a little and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this window and I'm going to resize it so that it's going to fit my side window and I'm making them just slightly bigger than the original oh that's going to be a nice window and I'm going to duplicate this oh wrong one I'm just doing command z to undo anything that I accidentally do duplicate there is my second window double check that looks good I am pleased with this so I'm going to move my windows to the side so they are my two big windows and I'm going to just attach these to each other so these are attached so that means then that if I move this around the cut this um shape in the middle will move with it so for example these are not attached so if I move the square see how only the square moves so I'm going to just command z that to be back in and then I'm going to hit attach I have this design saved and I'll do that magic thing where I share it to the Cricut community um, I did it before with a cushion video um, I did a patchwork cushion and I was able to share it and you guys were able to just open up my design and you could use this yourself so if you want to take my design and just tweak it you should be able to do that you should be able to move everything around resize the windows delete the windows add in whatever so this is the bones now you're probably thinking girl you have no roof and I haven't thought that far ahead <laughs> so I may just cut the roof I actually don't know what I'm gonna do for the roof um we will come back to the roof I could just do a flat roof <laughs> which would be oh a flat roof with a terrace a flat roof with a roof garden oh this could be a townhouse okay we will come back to to that so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to hit make it but I have some work to do with the mats because I'm going to stick the wood onto the mat but I have to use some masking tape to make sure that it's stuck down and I'm also just checking out how the crick oh look at the little windows there is one of my sides that's perfect 
there is another side and then this one has all of the windows for this project i'm going to be using my cricut maker and i'm also going to be using the knife tool so i'm going to swap out my usual blade that i used and i'm going to insert in the knife blade when you're working with a heavier and thicker material it's recommended to use the purple strong grip mat and also to tape down either the piece of wood or if it's chipboard to the mat just in case it moves around while it's going through the machine. Once the material is taped to the mat, I'm gonna select the material on the laptop. So I'm gonna select a base wood, and then I'm going to do the magic where I pop the mat into the machine, and then I click go, and then the cutting begins. When you're cutting wood or a thicker material on your Cricut, it takes longer to cut than let's say vinyl or paper or card. It's gonna take that bit longer because it cuts it multiple times and it does multiple passes before it's finished and ready to take out. I had a little test to see if it had cut through and it looks like it has. Something I forgot to do and I said on screen was I did push these little rings to the side, but obviously this one I should have pushed over here because I did get some little um, ring marks, tire marks, but I don't think. Oh, actually, you don't notice it. Oh, this is exciting. Yes. Okay. There goes my door. You could keep these, I'm not going to throw these out, these could be used for something. You could use for artwork inside a wall. Anyway, keep these. Oh, I'm so excited. Door, window, 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 window. There is the first cut. I'm going to keep this piece of wood as well because it's going to come in handy when I need to do some windows. So. First cut, it has been a success. I now need to cut the rest. <laughs> okay, we are on the kitchen counter now. I've cut out front, side, side, and back. I now need to do the windows, but I have run out of wood. But I've just found, I have a stash of these, car like this is cardboard but it's the same depth as the wood. Let me get a scrap just to show you. So it's the same depth. So I think I'm going to use these, this like cardboard. Um, it's quite sturdy. So I'm going to see if it'll be any good for the windows. Please ignore my messy office. I am on the floor. And um, my concern with the windows is that the blade may, it may be too intricate for the blade. That is my concern. So I'm gonna cut maybe the two big windows first, see how they go. And then I'll try cutting the smaller ones. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the um, cardboard, the thick cardboard that I did with the wood and I'm gonna tape it onto the mat. I've also been trying to reuse the tape where I can. Um, to avoid using too much. So yeah, let's fingers crossed that the windows will cut out and it won't be too, my, what I'm worried is I'll, tr I'll pop the pane of glass, I'll pop the squares through and I may tear around it, that's my concern. But I can always glue it back. So yeah, let's give this a shot. I'm so excited. So my window, I have some of my windows here. You can probably hear my cricket working away in the background, making me more windows. Here is one and it's perfect. Also loving the contrast of the chipboard against the wood. It is quite nice. I'm just gently poking out the window panes from my um, windows and then if there's any kind of little bits in the corner I'm just tidying them up with a blade. Actually let's have a look at the big window. Oh, 
the big, I am way too excited <laughs> for this. Let me pop out these window. Let me just tidy this little piece up. Oh my God. <laughs> I <laughs> am obsessed. So my plan is to paint this, I'm thinking, and then I was gonna paint these maybe white. I do like the contrast of the two. I have found my tiny wallpaper. Okay, this car is in my office right now. I have some dollhouse wallpaper that I got at Christmas time. I am gonna cut, do you know the, um, the front, the two sides and the back? I am gonna cut them again, but I'm gonna put the wallpaper paper because it's like, it's just like a little bit thicker than a copier paper. And I'm gonna stick it on a light grip mat and I'm gonna change out my blade because when you're wallpaper in a doll's house, something I've noticed is you have to measure and you have to cut it um, just from previous doll houses that I've done. But before I assemble everything, I was like, what if I cut the wallpaper with the same like dimensions, just change it. Instead of cutting base wood, I'm gonna be cutting paper. And I will have the wallpaper that I can just glue on. So then when I assemble it, the inside will all be wallpapered. And I won't have to kind of intricately be trying to get in and wallpaper. And I also have herringbone floor. <laughs> You'll notice that I swapped over to a blue mat. Granted, it's a little bit messy. I do need to clean my mats, but they're still sticky on them, so they work. So I'm using the blue mat, which is a light grip mat, because if I put the paper onto the purple strong grip mat, I'm, it may tear the paper when I'm taking it off. I'm then gonna just glue it to the wood. I'm just using a little spongy thing from my craft stash, and I'm actually using some of the wood glue, but you'd get away with using PVA glue for this. I like to share my mistakes, or should I say, say my learns. My knife blade is a couple of years old, and my first batch of windows, they are really intricate. My first batch of windows came out perfect. I'm short the back windows. I'm short like five windows. So I went to cut them out on the base wood, but I think it's too intricate because when I go to pop them out, my window is, the frame isn't coming out as perfect as it came out the first time. I calibrated my knife blade. I tried to do it on the um, chipboard and it's not like it was the first time. So I think I need to change my knife blade. You can get replacement ones because mine is quite old. So that I've hit a speed bump and I still need, even if I could cut my door, maybe if I cut my door, but do a less intricate door. I have a door, we can sort out the back window situation. I just thought I would share that. I reckon, I reckon I can get a door on this scrap piece of fabric, or wood, because it's holding me back. <laughs> I want to get the windows installed. So I may have to do paper windows for the back and just glue them on, but at least the front will have windows and the side windows, which are the most important. I'm gonna cut a door and I'm gonna paint the front of my house and I'll be back. As I was painting the wood pieces, I noticed that some of them were slightly bending. So I waited for the paint to dry and then I just slotted them underneath the piece of wood and I weighed it down with some tins of paint that I had in the kitchen just to let them dry flat. I think the moisture from the paint was just slightly bending the wood. I'm also using the same wood glue that I used on the other pieces to stick the window frames onto the windows. And this is so cute.
know how I always say to keep your Cricut project simple? <laughs> well, I've hit the wall of, oh no, I have bitten off more than I can chew. I put, oh, this looks cute from this side too. I put windows, these are made from paper, and yes, I did break some of them. <laughs> so I cut extra. I put paper windows in this, very cute. Also looks cute from the back. I'm going to, because um, my base wood got moisture from the paint, um, it's buckled just slightly. So I'm going to put some weight on it and then just leave it dry for a couple of hours um, just to flatten it again. And I'm gonna do that with all of the pieces. So then when I go to assemble them, they will just glue together nicely. How cute. Um, so I'm gonna flatten these and just leave them. I have to stick the front door. I went for a sage green door. Actually, my door is, door is drying. Oh my God, how cute. I'm having way too much fun with this. Yes, I'm gonna leave everything to dry and I'm gonna stick them underneath my piece of wood there with some weight on them so they're all nice and flat. And then it is, I think, assembly time. And then I can see where I'm at. I need to make a decision on the roof. I do not know what I'm gonna do for the roof. Like, I do have some cardboard. Oh, this is cute. So I could possibly do something, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I need a construction lesson. Anyway, I'm getting there. So I left my wood pieces overnight with some weight on it and they were nice and flat the next day. I'm cutting a chunk off that scrap piece of wood that I've been using and I roughly made it about 30 centimeters wide so I made it bigger than the dollhouse itself just so you can have like a garden or a bit of paving on the outside. I'm just marking it out with a pencil and then I'm cutting it with my mini circular saw. Okay, this is where I went wrong. I am using some white adhesive. This is actually some adhesive that I use for my wall paneling and I had some left over. And I wanted something that would give me a bit of an instant grip. The downside to this was I forgot that this doesn't dry clear. So the wood glue that I used yesterday doesn't give me that kind of instant grip. So I decided to use my glue gun and the glue gun, there's pros and cons to all of them. I find the glue gun, you can see some of the lumps of glue. So I found that it gave me the best stickiness, but it mightn't have been the prettiest. If anyone is watching who maybe has experience making miniature things and you have a glue that is perfect for this job, feel free to share your favorite glues in the comments section so that we can all get some help. So these are the hinges that I'm using to stick the door on, but I picked these up in the good old proper hardware shop and I think it would be better if I had have used dollhouse hinges that would be smaller and maybe would have thinner screws. So I'm using my glue gun to stick them on because obviously the nails that they came with are much too big um, and I was afraid that they might split the base wood as well. So I'm using the glue gun to stick the hinges on. I just used this handy cutting tool to cut some paper to size. I'm cutting the herringbone floor to size and I'm just popping that inside before I paint around the base of the dollhouse. So 
My dollhouse is far from perfect. However, A for effort, at least I tried. There is a huge miniature community online and if you are someone who maybe stumbled across this video and you make miniatures and you have tips to share or if you have made miniature furniture or anything mini with your Cricut maker, leave all of your best practices and tips in the comment section to share with the community. Help a sister out. Also, Thumbs up if you made dollhouses from cardboard cereal boxes as a kid. When I was assembling this, I was getting serious nostalgia vibes from when me and my cousin would make like shoebox dollhouse, cereal box dollhouses, and we would make and cut little rooms. Now granted, they were never to this sophistication and scale. Our windows were literally squares. So I feel like we've come a long way since. Also, the roof is just sitting on top because the hinges that I have um, are kind of more designed for thicker woods and I think they need to be tacked in. So I think if I got dollhouse hinges from one of the websites, I, I was worried that if I put hinges on the top, the roof is going to lean open like this while it's being played with and I was afraid that the hinge would snap off because the hinges are not really strong with the glue gun. I would recommend getting dollhouse hinges with tinier, tinier nails um, and tacking them in. It's playable, it's good for the imagination. I'm obsessed with the windows. I, got, I didn't put a second floor in because my niece has a combination of Sylvanians and Barbies. And I was thinking, I don't know if this is big enough for a Barbie, but she may, sometimes when she visits me, she'll bring a bag of toys. And sometimes it could be Barbies and sometimes it could be Sylvanians or mini things. So I left out the second floor. But I do, I have a video, I do have another dollhouse video from years ago, um, if you wanna check out, because I think I put floor in it, yeah. But basically just cut some cardboard and glue it in. So I learned a lot by this, another project with lots of lessons. <laughs> As I was doing this, I was thinking this would actually be something fun to do with someone. So if you have maybe a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew that loves things like this, obviously supervise when it comes to using the machines, but the fun of like picking how many windows you want, cutting the windows, gluing them on, things like that, um, it would be really fun to do something with it. Sadly, my niece is in school right now, so um, it's quite hard to film with her and she's an absolute riot. But I definitely think if I'm to do some modifications from this, we need to call up our girl Lily and we need to get her involved. So let me know if you have tried something like this or if you just enjoyed watching the process. Maybe you've no intention of doing it, that is cool. If you have any uh, questions about your Cricut machine or anything, leave them in the comment section and I will try and get back to you. Thumbs up. If you're new, hit the subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video.